The first thing I do is I draw a top-down view of the fretboard in Adobe Illustrator. The document size matches the blank, which is 3 inches by 22 inches. And then I draw a box uh, to that same dimension. Uh, the drawing includes the shape of the fretboard, uh, the nut slot, all the fret slots, uh, the marker dots, and then you'll notice kind of a funky looking shape up at the top, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But once the drawing's done, I'll export it as a .svg. In Easel, I create a, a file which corresponds to the size of the fretboard, which again is 3 inches by 22 inches, and it's a quarter inch thick, and I'm just using Bobenga as a material. Then I'll import the um, SVG file, and because it has that box that matches the dimension of the fretboard blank, the file will land in the easel file uh, so that the lower left corner is perfectly positioned in the zero spot, which is the again that lower left corner. This file then becomes a master file, and from that I'll use it to make uh, most of the other files that I need. The first file that I'm going to make is for the fret slot. So what I'll do is I'll make a copy of that original master file, and then I'll go in and delete all the elements that I don't need. Once I have a file with just the fret slots, I can select those and set the um, the type of tool, the bit that I'm going to use, which in this case will be uh, a 0 0.023 inch end mill. And then I'll set the depth. And uh, what I'll do is I'll make the depth for these slots uh, about an eighth of an inch deep, which is 0.125 inches. And then I'll do the same for the nut slot, which is also going to be 0.125 inches. But I'll keep the same bit that I use for um, making the fret slots. It just saves a little bit of time. For the depth of cut, I'll set it at 0 0.015 inches and the feed rate at 20 inches. That should prevent broken bits. Then I'll uh, check the path to make sure that the bit's going to go where I want it to go. And finally, I'll rename the file. Um, 25.5, which corresponds to the scale length uh, fretboard slots. For the marker dots, I made a, another copy of the file and then uh, went in and removed all the elements that I don't need, leaving just the marker dots. Then I selected the dots and set them to be a fill uh, with a depth of about an eighth of an inch. For the depth of cut and the feed rate, I just left it the default. And of course, I check the uh, tool path to make sure it's going to cut it the way I want it to. And then I rename the file just to keep everything organized. For the shape of the fretboard, I made a final copy of the easel master file, and then I deleted everything except for uh, the outer shape. And then I set that to be an outline rather than um, on path or inside. That way, when it's cut, it's the shape is correct. And when I cut to a full depth, I have the option of using tabs, which keeps the fretboard from flying around during the milling process. And then I just uh, move those tabs into position um, that makes sense for the shape. I'm just going to use the same size bit that I used to do the marker dots, which is the uh, eighth inch bit, and then I'll keep the 
uh, depth of plunge and the feed rate, the default setting. Here I'm looking at the uh, the actual tool path to see just to make sure that everything is going to go where I want it to. And finally, I'll rename the file again just to keep things organized. To create the fretboard radius, I'm going to use Rhino 3D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the original uh, fretboard master file that I created in Adobe Illustrator. And as you can see, it comes in with that same encompassing box, which helps position uh, the fretboard relative to the XYZ zero position. Then what I have to do is I have to remove all the elements that I won't be needing. Uh, all I'm going to need for this is the fretboard shape and that kind of weird looking shape that I created up at the top, which uh, will make sense here in a second. So when I zoom in on this, this is a shape that's going to be used to actually create the solid that has the radius. So what I have to do is rotate that into the correct orientation first. You can see what that is in the perspective view. Now I'm going to extrude it as a solid, the length of the fretboard shape. And that's the basic uh, fretboard with the radius. But what I have to do now is trim it to the um, shape of the fretboard itself. So I'll extrude the fretboard shape as a, as a surface slightly taller than the actual fretboard is. And then I'll trim everything to size. And that's the finished fretboard radius. So next thing I have to do is export it as a .stl file, which is stereolithograph. And that's the uh, format that my CAM program uh, recognizes. I set the tolerance for 0 .0001, which is pretty fine, but that gives me a very accurate shape. And then I save it as a binary. The program I'm using for CAM is MeshCAM. And what I'll do is I'll import that .stl file. I have to make sure that the material uh, stock dimensions are the same as the blank, which is 3 inches wide, 22 inches long, and then a quarter of an inch thick. I don't need to set tabs. Um, the retract height is about a quarter of an inch, this is fine. And then I'll set, make sure that the zero position is set to that lower left corner. That's the same corner as used by all the other, the easel files, so everything stays um, in the correct position. Now I'm ready to set the tool path. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill, and I will use a uh, 0 0.06 inch depth of cut, a 0 0.06 inch uh, step over, 100 inch feed rate, plunges at 100. Um, f I'll also do a finishing pass using the same bit, but it will have a 0 0.02 inch step over and a feed rate of about 150. And then a plunge rate is the same as in the rough cut, which is 20 inches. And then I'm going to use cut along the Y and I'm going to uncheck the don't uh, machine top of stock. That way the whole thing gets machined. Now you'll notice it's asking for an oversized cut. I say keep the current value which is set at zero. That way it's only going to be uh, machining the top radius of the fretboard and not cutting all the way through the shape which we don't want to do yet. And that's what the tool path will look like. About 16 minutes to cut it. And there's two paths here. There's the rough cut and the parallel finish. So you can switch those on and off and kind of see what they're going to look like. 
So I'll save these as a basic G code. And I'll just call that fretboard radius. And then that's done. At this point, it's uh, time to start carving on the, the X-carve, and I'm not going to show that in this video. But when you attach the blank um, to the waste board, you want to make sure that it's, it's going to stay there and you're not going to move it during the entire process of, of um, performing all these different cuts. And you're also going to need to follow a specific order. Um, and another very important piece is once you set that zero position for the lower left corner, it has to stay there. You can't um, move the bit um, on the X and Y axis. Uh, otherwise, trying to get it back is going to be a real problem. So you want to make sure that it always goes back to that same spot for each cut. So the first file to cut is the fretboard slots, which is done with easel. Then the fret markers are cut also using easel. To carve the fretboard's 12-inch radius, I'm going to take that uh, G-code file that I created in MeshCam, and I'm going to send it to the X-Carve using a, a free program called Universal G-Code Sender. And, of course, um, you need to make sure that the zero position of the bit uh, for Universal G-Code Sender is exactly the same as it was in um, Easel. Otherwise, uh, everything is going to be cut um, out of alignment. And then, finally, we'll go back to Easel to cut the fretboard shape and once again I'm going to remind you that you need to keep that zero position exactly the same uh, from easel to g-code sender and then back to easel again